Agriculture in the Classroom is actually a national program that was started by the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, back in the early 1980s. Um, there are currently Ag in the Classroom programs in all 50 states and in all U.S. territories. And though we may all have a little bit different mission statement in our states, I guess our purpose is overall the same in that we want to educate primarily the youth and the teachers about the wonderful industry of agriculture. Our goal is to have an agriculturally literate society in that you understand where your food comes from and everything that was involved in getting that food, we say from farm to fork. Okay, so how does it leave the farm? And there's so many aspects of it, um, you know, the transportation, the distribution to the grocery store. How did it get to that shelf and ultimately to your table that you feed your children, you know, for supper at night? So that's our goal is just make people aware that our most precious resources is our farms, our, our soil, our water, and we have to take care of that if we want to continue with our livelihood. One thing we have found in, in my travels and my volunteers' travels around the state is there are a lot of misconceptions out there about agriculture. I've been in, you know, around first graders or second graders and ask them where milk comes from and they say Winn-Dixie or Albertsons. They really don't know that, you know, there is an actual cow that produced that milk. Or one of the, the lessons we have is actually called mis addressing misconceptions about agriculture. And one of the questions is where does chocolate milk come from? And you'd be surprised at how many students and adults as well that have told me a brown cow. Well, actually, you know, actually we know the milk comes from the cow, but it takes a person to add the chocolate and make it chocolate milk. So there are a lot of things like that, you know, like brown eggs have to come from brown chickens. Well, that's not true. It's actually um, the different breeds of chicken, and you can look at the uh, chicken's earlobes and tell what color eggs they're going to have. You know, so there's all kinds of misconceptions out there, and that's one thing that our program works very hard to clear up and be sure that we have accurate facts out there. Last year, 2009, for the first year, we celebrated Louisiana Agricultural Literacy Day. Um, our governor, Bobby General, even proclaimed that last year, it was in April, uh, we had a proclamation from the governor. We hope to do the same this year. So this will be our second annual Louisiana Agricultural Literacy Day, and that's going to be April 28, 2010. And what we do is we select a book. This year, the book we've selected is The Tree Farmer. Um, it's an award-winning book, and it was written by Chuck Lavelle and Nicholas Gravata. And what we do, we sign up volunteers. Our goal is to have as many volunteers in classrooms across the state reading this book and talking to them about the importance of agriculture. Um, last year, we had about 260 volunteers that read to over 600 classrooms. And so, of course, we want to surpass those numbers. What Ag in the Classroom does, once a volunteer registers with us, we provide them a book free of charge. Um, and the goal is they would leave that book with a teacher that they've read to that class. Um, we give them a classroom set of bookmarks. And we also put together a teacher packet that they deliver to the teacher that will include lesson plans and more information about our program. The registration will be online. You have to register with me by the end of March so that we can get the books in the mail to you and those kinds of things. And we know teachers today um, are under so much pressure to perform and to meet these state standards and the high stakes testing. So the way we approach it is we develop um, with teachers around the state. We develop English lessons, math lessons, science lessons, social studies lessons that use agriculture to teach those grade level expectations. The easiest way to find things that we have to offer is visiting our website, and that is www.aitcla.org. Because of all our material is free, um, what we try to do is just put everything in a PDF format, all of our lesson plans, worksheets, activity instructions, just on there where teachers can download absolutely free. We're also on Facebook and Twitter now, so you can find us on that. I'm just getting into that, so I'm still learning that process. But that seems to be catching on, and that's a real quick way that I can get, if I have a new lesson plan or a new project coming up, to get that out to teachers right away. So I think the web is the way to go. <laughs>